Shabbat Shalom. Um, before you get comfortable, if you wouldn't mind, can you stand up and turn to the camera and say Shabbat Shalom to Bernadette and the kids. Okay, Bernadette, just so you know, I've been home 11 days and I've yet to do a wash. I've absolutely run out of clothes. Jeremy, if you're watching, I'm wearing your shirt. And I could prove that. Well, actually, I ironed the wrong shirt, Bernadette. You'll get a kick out of this. No, my sleeves are not rolled up. I actually, I actually ironed this shirt last week to get, you know, kill two birds with one stone. But I didn't realize that this was Jeremy's shirt. So... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like I have to keep tapping out because I feel like I'm choking. Somebody's choking me out. I feel like I'm in MMA and I'm getting choked. So, and this is our leader. Could somebody translate that for me? Lady, don't start with me. It's been 12 days without burning that. You'll get yours. Thank you. I have not had a hug in a week, so when you go around for praise and worship, I would appreciate you giving me one. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people do it without getting a hug. Yeah. I mean, the Lord is, has hugged me more than you know, but he's given us each other because we need a physical embrace. We just do. We just do. So if you're not getting one, that's probably because you're not giving one. Think about it. All right. Um, This morning I heard 147 and I was as happy as could be because um, I don't have a favorite psalm, but I love this psalm. And just just so you know, I, I tell you this on a regular basis. If you've been to other synagogues within our our organism, the MJAA, which, which I'm going to tell you hands down, there is no messianic community like that. None. And the reason why, the reason why the MJA is so wonderful, it's, it's this simple, because they have an incredible balance with excellent theology and excellent charismata. You follow? In the body of Messiah, there are people who pride themselves on theology and they have no gifting. They're afraid of the gifting. Then, sadly enough, there's people with just loud gifting and their theology stinks. And it's hard in the body of Messiah to find both. Do you understand what I'm saying? And listen to me. You need absolutely both. The Word of God has to be energized by the power of God. Without it, it lacks luster, it lacks meaning, and it lacks change. Okay, with that being said, the MJ is exceptional. They're exceptional. And they have a calling. And it's a very legitimate calling. Um... And this is our calling. If you want to know the calling of the Messianic Synagogue, I'm going to tell it to you real quick. It does not matter why you're here. If, if you're not here because of this calling, it doesn't matter to me. You understand? It doesn't matter to me. That's why I don't push it. Because I don't want to scare you off. You might be here because you like the praise and worship. You might like the preaching style. You might like the windows. It does not matter. You're more than welcome to stay here as long as you like for whatever reason you find God's calling you to stay here. You understand? But let me tell you why the Messianic community was rebirthed, not birthed. It it, it was birthed back in Yeshua's day. He birthed it, you understand? And it went dormant for a long time, and it's rebirthed. And it's not to get Gentiles to to worship on Saturday. That's between you and God. I could really care less about that. The reason that the Messianic community was rebirthed, for three reasons. One, for the restoration of Israel. God is going to restore his people because he loves them, they're chosen, and he's good. You want to get behind that because that's his heart. And if you're not pulling for the restoration of his people, when you need restoration, you follow? To the revival of the Jewish people, there is one last revival coming, only one. There's not going to be another revival in Africa and India. Listen to me. 
One is coming, and it's the revival of the Jewish people. And we're here, so when they're revived, they have a place to come. Okay? They need to identify with their biology. It says so in the Bible, they have to be an identifiable remnant. And if we don't have a safe haven for them, then when they come, it's going to be too late. You say, Rabbi, but they haven't come yet. They are, and I'm ready for them. You understand? Last, but definitely not least, is the return of Messiah. Now, now listen to me. The most important thing in the spiritual realm today or any other day since he left is his return. More important than your mother getting saved, my mother getting saved, more important than your missions work, more important than your work downtown, uptown, and every other place is the return of Messiah. In order for him to return, there are two precursors. The restoration of Israel, for he will sit on his throne in Jerusalem, and the revival of his people who will bring him in. So as arrogant as this sounds, and I don't mean it to sound arrogant, but it is biblical. What we're doing is the most important thing there is, preparing for the Messiah's return. And for 2,000 years, what I call the great sleeping giant, the church, the body of Messiah, not a denomination, the body of Messiah has been dormant. She's sleeping like Lot's wife. She keeps looking back and looking back as opposed to looking up. You're living in a day, absolutely unequivocally, I stake my whole reputation where well, you're going to see Messiah's return. There's not a day that goes by that I don't look to the eastern sky. Okay? It is not torn, but it's tearing. This, uh, this psalm is, is a beautiful psalm, and it has all to do about Messiah's return. And you'll see verses 2 through 6. It's all about the restoration of Israel. This was written 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago, God prophesied this. And you're living in the day that this is speaking about. So, if you're not excited yet, let me tell you how the psalm starts, okay? It starts with a word and it says, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let, me, let me give you the continuing of the first verse, okay? Because this is, this is the reason why we're here. This is the reason why you're here. You might not know why you're here. Let me tell you how good it is to sing praises to our God. How sweet, how fitting. You understand? How fitting. You know what that means? It's perfect. If you're here to praise God, you're a perfect fit in the kingdom. If you're not, how sweet, how fitting to praise Him. So let's, let's start again. I don't know if you woke up late or you had a bad week. Or God's not God to you anymore, but you desperately need to make him bigger today. He's, he's not big enough for you. He's not. As big as he is for you, you might be, Rabbi, you don't know me. I'm here as a guest. I, I've been walking with the Lord for 40. I could care less how long you're walking with the Lord, buddy. Your God's not big enough. Okay? And I'm telling you that by the time you leave, he's going to be a little bigger. But this is the good part. And you're going to be a little smaller. So let's try this again, okay? Because you look a little sleepy. You need a coffee? So you got to get up by 4 o'clock in the morning. If you start praising them at 4, by the time you get in there at 10, man, you're ready to go. You know what I'm saying? You roll out of bed and you're looking for your clothes. It's too late. Shabbat started last night. Where were you? What were you doing last night? Celebrating? So you should be ready. Who was celebrating last night? Who forgot? All right, the ones with your hands up, help the ones with the hands down, okay? You ready? Hallelujah! 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 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, now, now this makes sense how good it is to sing praises to our God. Don't sit down. What are you sitting down for? Make believe your team just scored a touchdown. You'd be standing there for another half an hour. All right, Rabbi, hallelujah. Now let me sit down. Sit on my hands. Make believe you just won the lottery. Okay, hey, here you go. You just got home from Shabbat and the IRS said they made a mistake on last year's taxes and you got to check for 1100 bucks. Okay, are you sitting? Come on, you do it for money, you do it for football, do it for the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How sweet, how fitting to praise Him. Adonai is rebuilding Jerusalem. <laughs> Gathering the dispersed of Israel. Guys, this was prophesied 3,000 years ago, okay? 1948, they started walking back in the land, okay? People in Yemen, when they saw the plains, you know what they said? Iron eagles. They knew what Isaiah said. They're going to be carried by eagle's wings. Do you think they thought a, a, an eagle's going to carry hundreds of thousands of Jewish people? As soon as they saw the plane, they said, iron eagles. They got it. And Russia, do you know why the wall went down? Do you know why that Berlin Wall became a burlap wall? Because they said, Jews, you're not leaving. And God said, don't you tell, listen, don't you tell me, okay, what I'm going to do with my people. When I say they come, they come. That wall went down overnight. Do you understand? Nobody can take it down. Nobody. The world was perplexed. How do we get families reunited? What do we do? We're in the midst of a cold war. God took it down. He made the iron curtain a shower curtain. Do you understand? That was in your day. This isn't something that happened 3,000 years ago, guys. It's not something you're reading in Moses' day. It's something that happened today. It's happening today. Wake up. Get your head out of the sand, for God's sakes. If you're bored, something is radically wrong with your walk. Adonai is rebuilding Jerusalem, gathering the dispersed of Israel. A plane just went home from the United States. Don't you understand how ludicrous that is? A Jewish man who doesn't know Messiah making seven figures. He goes to the country club. His kids are going to Ivy League schools. And one morning he wakes up and he doesn't know why, but he says, we're leaving. We're going to Israel. Do you know how many people are living? You think, you know how many people are living in the poverty level in Israel? Do you have any idea? 75% of the country is starving. You don't know? You have no clue. 75% starving. Living under $350 a month. Try it. In a place where there's 400% inflation. And the guy gets on the plane. And he doesn't know Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah, wake up. Okay? You're living in the end days. Stop getting caught up in the minutia. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Let me tell you something. They're going to go there brokenhearted and when he comes, man. He determines how many stars are on, calls them all by name. If you think he's that intimate with the stars, how much more intimate do you think he could be with you? Lady, he's got, he's got relationship with the stars. Okay, the stars, here they make sound. They communicate, the stars are communicating with God. How much more should we? Our Lord is great. It's, it's, it's like David got a catharsis. He's, he's, he's writing this. He doesn't know what he's writing. And then he says, he knows his thoughts by name. And then he has to, our Lord is great. His power is vast. Vast. There's no end 
It's incomparable. It's indescribable. It's ineffable. His wisdom beyond all telling. You could never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever describe his wisdom. I don't even try anymore. I just say that to people. It's beyond my ability. Get to know him. You'll see what I'm talking about. I don't know, he sustains the humble, but brings the wicked down to the ground. That's part of the deal. Don't just tell them one part. Sing to Adonai with thanks. No, not yeah. Sing to Adonai with thanks. Sing praises on the instruments to our God. He veils the sky with clouds. He provides the earth with rain. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives food to the animals, even to the young ravens, even their little caw. You ever hear a young raven cry? It's pitiful. Even to the young raven, he responds. How much more to you? Now he gets into the fact that he takes no delight in the spirit in the in the physical. His delight is totally spiritual. You understand? He takes no delight in the strength of a horse, no pleasure in a run of speed. He's not at the game going, I hope they win. He could care less. Rabbi, yes, rabbi, yes, rabbi, yes. I don't know, he takes pleasure. Adonai takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who wait for his grace. There's no greater grace than the return of Messiah. I'm waiting for that grace. Glorify Adonai Jerusalem, prophesying. They will. Praise your God, Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. No, nobody's taking that place. He blesses your children within you. He brings peace within your borders. He gives you your fill of the finest wheat. He sends his word out over the earth. His command runs swiftly. Meaning when he speaks, it happens. Thus he gives snow like wool, scatters hoarfrost like ashes, Sends crystals of ice, hail like crumbs of bread. Who can withstand such cold? Then he sends his word out and melts it away. He makes the winds blow and the water flows. And he ends so beautiful. Listen, the way this ends on these two verses, he's saying that Israel is God's depository of his word. And the channel of its communication. If it wasn't for the Jewish people, you would not have the word of God. It says in Romans, they were entrusted with the very words of God. And they brought Messiah to the world, period. I'm not saying that as a Jew. I'm saying that as a believer. We are indebted every time you pick up the Bible. Every time you pick up the Bible, you should say, thank you, God, and thank you, Jew. And to think the believing community is totally neutral. Whatever. You know what? Get with Yeshua and ask him if he feels that's appropriate. Ask him. Don't ask me. He reveals his words to Jacob. That's Israel. His laws and rulings. What would you do without it? I love the Ten Commandments. What would you do? You would be clueless. You wouldn't know how to pray. His laws and ruling to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They're special. It's just the way it is. They're not special because I said so. They're special because he said so. And if God is special to you and they're special to your God, then they should be special to you. End of story. And it's so sad that people feel obligated. Or let me bless them so I can get a blessing. That's like people giving to get. That's sick. It's demonic. 
I pray that if you don't have it, if you're here today, I pray that the Lord downloads on you his spirit and just spins you, spins you into another dimension. Knocks you to the ground and you wake up and go, I don't know what it is. I love the Jews. It's your job to provoke them to jealousy. That is your mandate. And that mandate has not only been unfulfilled for 2,000 years, but the only thing we've done is provoke them, but not to jealousy. It's time. Body of Messiah, wake up. Now, I know you guys get it, but I'm tired of preaching to the choir. I know there's people watching all over the world. Don't shut me off yet. This is important. Get out there and tell somebody. Some of you go to church on Sunday. Tell your pastor. Tell him. They won't like it. No, they won't like it. Try to use the Bible. They might like that. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his rulings. But we do. Hallelujah. Well, you're, you already got a word from the Lord. So if you got to leave early, you, you got something. Got something out of the deal. Um, it's an amazing day we're living in. As I said, you could be here for any reason. Listen, I don't. I could care less if you're Jewish, not Jewish. I could care less if you're black or white. I really can. I don't say that because it's the thing to say. You know, I'm, I, you know how I feel about political correctness, right? You know how I feel about it by now. And I, I just don't see the color. I just don't see the thing. I just don't see it. Thank God. So again, don't, don't be scared of, don't go, oh my, oh my goodness, I really didn't know about the restoration of Israel and, and now I got to go somewhere. Listen, just enjoy yourself. Okay? Enjoy yourself. And in the midst of it, in the midst of it, try to catch the vision. Because you, you might say, why do you push it so much? Well, because nobody else is. <laughs> and it's important. <laughs> and if, if everybody else in town was, if the church is well, let's say, I, I would be gone. I wouldn't need to. You know what I mean? And so get out there. Be an emissary. Put yourself out there. Take it to the streets. Stop keeping it in. You know, stop going to the building. Bring it. Bring it. Got to bring it. You will not find me one verse where Yeshua said, bring him to the temple. When I hear a pastor say, what church do you go to? I, I feel like throwing up. And if they ever ask me, you know the answer they get, right? I don't go to church. I am. There are a plethora of chances in the week that you have to share. And just be led by the Spirit. Don't, don't be weird. Do you know where you'd be if you die tomorrow? Uh, in a car wreck? I don't know. Don't, don't be weird. Just let the Holy Spirit borrow your body. Okay? This way it's no pressure. It's on Him. And guess who can handle the pressure? Bingo. Father, thank you so much for this Shabbat. Thank you so much for this glorious time that we get to spend with you as a extended family. Thank you so much that we still live in a country where it's, it's all right. But Father, we want you to know here, Beth Yeshua, when it becomes unall right, it's still going to be all right for us. Cops could come. I could care less. We're going to praise you till our dying breath. We're going to praise you. No matter what the government says, it's right. It's fitting and it's right. And we shall carry on. Father, I don't have to ask you to be a blessing because you are, you are. You have been, you will be, and you are. And I know you're going to bless us today. So I just want to thank you for the blessing that's coming in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.